What's up, Rick? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> this is a just landed boys. This huh? is just a just a landed voice. I feel like I'm in baggage claim right now. I, I feel like I'm in a podcast studio. Well, you look like you're navigating the <laughs> runway right now, <laughs> and not in the model sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, what's up, man? I you just got back from Hawaii. Mahalo. I just got I, back from New York City. Exactly. You know what's crazy? We had similar timed uh, flights, five hour joints. Oh, did we? Yeah, yeah. Because it's five hours to get to Hawaii, five yeah. hours to get to New York. it's eight, three three hours uh, time zone difference. It's so exhausting. It's five it, hours is an exhausting flight. That's bro. an exhausting flight. Yeah. Did you get a middle seat? What you I get? got a middle seat. You got a middle? Not only did I should we start it or it's, we already started? Yeah. Okay. We're starting it from where we started. Yeah. So there was a pregnant lady next to me. Yeah. You know, well, first, we, we got on the plane around like 11 p.m. And we're sitting there waiting to take off. And I hear this lady go, can I get your bag? Right? Yeah. So I thought she meant like my carry-on. I was like, uh, what do you mean? And she points at the paper bag in my flap. Yeah. This girl's yakking in her lunch bag. Oh. Chunky, bro. I'm talking about poke pieces. Like, But she's pregnant. She, but I didn't know she was pregnant. So I didn't, you know. You couldn't tell? So there was no empathy at that point. Yeah. I was just like, damn, I just, you know, I pulled a short straw. Like this is this is this out of all the seats, it's like two hundred. I chose the one, or I got assigned to the one next to the pregnant lady. She's like, "Hey, I'm three months pregnant. Can I get your bag?" She went through seven of those lunch bags, bro. Mm. Seven, and wow. you know, I'm trying to sleep, but every like five minutes or so, the uh, stewardess, you know, the she had to she had to pass the throw up bags to the lady, but because they couldn't reach, I'm the middle guy, so I was transferring the weight, so oh, you could feel you felt the weight of the you throw could feel up. the weight of the throw up, well, and then you know weight to it, yeah. And you know when you kind of close the bag, the little waft of air that comes out. Oh my up? god, he sniffed it, bro, uh, seven times. And then the, the like third transition, I was like, "You all right? What's wrong?" She's like, "I'm pregnant. I have a morning sickness." Blah blah. I'm like, "Oh shit." Second question was. Where's your, you know, how come you're going through this alone? You know, where's your, where's your husband? Where's wait, your wait, wait, hold on, hold on. That's a little bit of a. It's too much information. It's a very personal kind of question. I mean, my thing is though, she was like. She, She's like, he left me as soon as he found out I was pregnant. But, like, like, this is like my, that could have led to that. It could have, but when phlegm of her vomit is rolling down my wrist, I right. have a little you bit of a right, right to figure out where's your man that should be having the phlegm going. But I didn't say it in an accusatory way. I was just, you know, loving, empathetically, like, hey. And you know what she said? What? We broke up yesterday. No. Yeah. He left her. He left her stranded on the island with wow. his kid. So I'm the baby daddy now. <laughs> <laughs> Did she really say she, 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 she Yeah, he, he, he left. He, they broke up. Yeah. And then she started crying. So exactly what you said. Like, I just opened Pandora's box, right? So, you know, I put my arm around her. I'm like, yo, we prayed a little bit. And, uh... We, we just talked, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, who am I, Dr. Phil? You know, like, what am I going to do? <laughs> but I helped her with the uh, uh, vomit, got her some uh, yeah. ginger ale, gave her my penis. Peanuts. <laughs> peanuts. Jesus Christ. And, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, well, uh, welcome back. And uh, I saw the videos of you over there. We have a friend in Hawaii who always brings us out there named Bone. Oh and this motherfucker falls asleep at clubs. Every time, like 95% of the yeah. time, he's going to fall asleep. And, you know, club owners really hate that shit. 100%. Yeah. I mean, first of all, why is you not allowed to do that? Is it just because of the vibe? Like, you're, like, fucking up the vibe of the I club or what? it's a contagious what? thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like when you go into a club and you see a go-go dancer on stage yeah. giving it her all. It's just the respectful. vibe is set there, you know. Yeah. You go into a club and you see a man passed out with, That's his, not, yeah. with his neck cranked and unnatural. For business. It's bad for business, bro. <laughs> it's bad for business. Is it? Is that a fentanyl situation? Is that a boredom right. situation? Is it like is that oh, an OD situation? Right. Because Bone doesn't pass out like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. He has a little ragdoll physics in him. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, that is a fucked up situation. But the show went well. Show went incredible, bro. Yeah. Hawaiian brides, you know, we racked up before. The island, it's like we're island boys. <laughs> we're, yo, they have are so boys. much love for us. Bro. Yeah, they Honestly. really love you. They love you guys more than they love me out you there. Know, for nah, sure. nah, nah, nah. Everyone's been asking, but you know, we have that like stampede on a mentality. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That just kind of like uh, not rough, but just kind of <clears throat> mob up mentality. And yeah. I feel like we kind of share the same sentiments out there. So yeah. we just have like an army out there that just shows up. Shout out to Bone. Shout out to Spell. That's what's up, Ray. man. Just got yeah. back from New York. Um, I literally just landed. Like, yeah. 
30 minutes ago, got to the house and hopped on the pod just because I love you guys so much. Oh my much. God, dude. I love you. And of course, I was absolutely furious because <laughs> you were late. I was like, I took the earliest flight from New York to make it on time for the pod and you're five minutes away and I could, no one can reach you. So, no one can call it was, you. It was, you know what the first thing I thought about is because you talked about all this miscommunication. You just have yeah. to communicate with us and you are the hardest person to communicate with. So I'm like, the audacity of it and it just gets frustrating after a while. No, for sure. And I you know I'm playing it cool. Thank you so but much. But there was like, you know, 30 minutes a ago, glitch. I was fucking furious. I, 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 we were just, me and Alex was just about to leave. I have to go get food instead. Right, right. Because we were like, okay, this, this, this is motherfucker sticking done. to brand. It's yeah. a done. But uh, I'm it's so cool. sorry. Man. I just want to get back into the mood of uh, yeah. brotherhood <laughs> yeah. as opposed to this hatred. Thank you. This bro. boiling hatred that I felt about 45 minutes <laughs> I'm ago. I'm so sorry. Yeah, bro. it was boiling. I see the efforts right now and I really appreciate nah, it. It's all love, man. Thank it's you. all love. It's Aloha, just, brother. Yeah, we all, we all have things to work on. I decided to work on my rage. <laughs> I have K-Rage myself. I yeah. didn't think I did. Do you see it coming out a lot more now as you're getting older? Because I see the K phase. You what know? it is is I hate myself. <laughs> for the way i behave mm. but i also hate that every one of my close friends are kind of similar in that way like i wish we collectively can get it together right but no one is a buoy everyone no I, 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 I i'm not even blaming all my immediate circle i blame myself too like right. i don't have it together i don't have my leadership skills together we are a mess collectively <laughs> And that is why it's terrible. Like, I hate that we are a mess collectively. And I want us to get it together. Right. Like, I want our clan to Yeah, tighten it. up a little bit. Yeah, if there was, like, a caveman Olympic back in the day and there's all these crews and clans, right? We'd be eliminated we'd be, maybe, like, third round. We'd be eliminated by Mother Nature. By <laughs> like, we wouldn't be able to start the fire. We wouldn't right, be right. able to hunt. We wouldn't be able to gather. Damn, you that's how little of faith you have? Oh, no, I know for a fact. Wow. We are all over. Like, you can hunt, right? Right. Like, you can go and hunt. Yeah, I'll do the grizzly you shit. You can gather, mm. but you wouldn't know where to bring that back to. <laughs> like, you wouldn't. You'd I'd be like, oh, fuck, where was the I'd cave? Yeah. By the time you get back, we would have starved to death. Right, right. I would you have taken been late. To the other encampment. Yeah, like right, right, all right. your other, you know, you could hunt, get everything right, yeah. else would have been off. What would you, what would you uh, contribute to the, the group? So I'm hunting. You see, that's the good point. <laughs> Nothing, I would be like, you hunt, right. you gather. Yeah, yeah. And you guys would do your job. Like, I would be able to facilitate it and supervise <laughs> it. But you guys would not be able to come back on time. <laughs> I'd starve to death waiting on you guys because yeah. I couldn't do it on my own. So collectively our clan is fucked right right okay yeah that's what i'm saying yeah no yeah. I, I i feel that you know being in the islands and just seeing just kind of like how the samoans move you know the tribes the, the 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 people that i do i do love the the activeness of the surfing and and the fishing oh and man all that out there yo for you real know? i i told i told uh bone this like i think the era of partying like our ass off like to the night and mm. just going crazy like that phase of hawaii i think i'm i'm done with i want to go to hawaii similar like what you did yeah. with the fast lean fit boys where you went on a whole nutritious trip right yeah <laughs> a nutritious trip <laughs> a new trip yeah. <laughs> a new, yeah 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 no you're you're right though i i had a whole different hawaii experience going yeah. like top of the year did the hikes went to Kauai, right. all this stuff and it was it was amazing i think i'm gonna do that every year like yeah. january 1st after the new year's like debauchery i'm gonna right, go right. For, on that hike but speaking of the party stuff i did post the thing where i was like i feel blessed where i'm at and all that but obviously i have all these bad habits and mm. that comes to, with the partying you yeah. know yeah uh i mean all of us right we party a lot because for sure. quickly we're ready to reward ourselves with mm -hmm. a party night mm -hmm. instant gratification i i truly truly feel like i am reaching the tail end of my party phase. You said this in 2017. I know, March. but I truly, truly feel it this time around. Mm. You know, I, I really do. I And I keep saying like 2023, like top of the year, that's when I'm going to start it. But it really doesn't start until you have to, like yeah. right now, it's, yeah. there's no good time for you it. You know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. When you're just landed and we're kind of tired and we <laughs> just yeah, that's true. from a different coast, of course our body's going to say no. That's true. As soon but as I'm issue, fully rested, like, <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> nah, but, you know, and also that first sip, man. That imbibe, that 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 drink or two, you know, you yeah. just, it just opens a door where you're like, you know, 
Should I we? mean I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start going to AA meetings very soon. Wow. Yeah. Do I am you... and not not because I, I think I have the huge like you know problem with alcohol, uh -huh. but I do have enough of a problem for me and things that it's affecting my life. Really? Yeah. To the point where you think you need to be in a circle and and really yeah, I mean, sweat, I, well, I just want to talk. I just want to hear stories. I also want to share where you know my problem lies, and I want to stay accountable. Like I want to do it regularly, so I'm getting ch I'm checking in every week. It's like you know, That's like beautiful. the way you grew up in church, right? Yeah, like, yeah, Kind of yeah. did that for you, right? Right, like, right, right. It kept you in check. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I see it like a focal point. That's, that's yeah, beautiful. and I, I need that. I feel like that's a big. And, you know, a lot of my listeners might not know this mm -hmm. about me or mm -hmm. my friends, and I'm not putting anyone on blast, but we have... Oh, we party. We have a group. <laughs> yeah, we, we have party issues. Oh, we have party. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I do feel like I'm just being transparent about my personal party. Like, I don't put it as much. Actually, I just recently put a <laughs> clip of me yelling at Anderson's face from the Bahamas. I saw that. Drunk as this fuck. This <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I seem drunk there, but that is a regular occurrence. Yeah. And... I don't know. That's I, not I, a regular I, occurrence. Chill out. That was. A I, I do want to reach my. I do want to reach my great potential. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I still haven't reached the potential of greatness. Yet. For sure. I know. And I just. And I, I don't mean like I have to be one of the greats, but I just want to touch it for a yeah, second. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just tap it. Yeah. You know, just touch the rim. And in order to reach that greatness, there is some chipping away that we have to do still. Right. Yeah, there's, there's some stuff that's kind of weighing us down. I just feel like we've. They had a good run. Like, yeah. I've been partying since I was, like, 14, 15 years old, bro. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> drugs, alcohol, Jordan numbers girls, like, everything. Just partying. And, and it's it's kind of like – the. it's not saying, like, let's cut off all the partying. But, yeah. like, having if you paste it out, like, I partied more than just, like, weekend – um, every weekend since 15. Right. I've partied way more than just a weekend right, since right, 15. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Well, we've had random Tuesday excursions. <laughs> <laughs> Mondays, about? you know? Yeah. Like yesterday was Monday in New York I turned up. You know? You I was serious? like, yeah. <laughs> With who? Somehow who's, I found a Swedish, <laughs> you know, tourist. And right. I was like, let's do it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying it just, it just, <clears throat> it finds, it finds you if you're looking yeah. for it. Or nah, you know, you'll find true. it if you're looking for if it. If there's a will, there's a way, baby. <laughs> if there's a will, there's a party. If there's a pill, there's a way. No, it's that's what I'm saying. There's nah. a way. I don't I, know. And and also, it's I got to lead by example too. You know, nah, facts. We got we got a crew of people. There's people who, at least some people, who consider me like a leader, and I want to actually do that. Absolutely. Even in K Town, I think that's a big thing for me. Like. People have called me like, oh, a voice in K-Town, all those things. And I'm like, damn, what am I doing, though, to really, like, lead by an example or yeah. earn the title of mayor, even though I resigned last week. <laughs> yeah. I resigned as mayor. but you just bouncing back into that <laughs> like that, bro. I, mean, I, I might run again. I don't know. No, nah, I felt that, bro. I had that moment of uh, realization. You, so remember um, Asylum, that spot? <laughs> Hawaii has the worst <laughs> venue names, man. They're all hellish. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a lit venue. It's yeah. just like an after hours thing. And it's <laughs> there's a new spot. It's called Ether now. So it's the new asylum. Okay. Oh, should Bigger? you be putting it on blast? No, no, no. Like, no, no it's no, cool. It's, it's fine. Okay, no, no. Cool. It's, a, it's an actual spot. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and we party to the point where, you know, when, uh, you, you walk out and it's day. Sunny. Yeah. yeah. 32nd Street, New York type shit. I went straight to the beach instead of going to the house because yeah. I was like, this is my last night. And I and I laid there looking at the clouds. Was well, so beautiful though? It was. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely one of those like moments where I was just like, Rick, you're old now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> not old, but like y y your body. There's limits to it. I I don't. You see, the thing about it is, I don't think we should let our age or oldness determine that we shouldn't party. I think right. it should be other things. You know, that's true. Um, because you can still celebrate life at an older age. Or oh whatnot. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean old now as like the <laughs> ride is over. But it means keep your hands and feet in the cart at all times, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? You're over here wilding out, trying to get the camera picture, trying to do the no hands. Yeah. In this life, this roller coaster ride, bro, just, you know, enjoy the ride. But, yeah. you know. If you <clears throat> I, I, I also, what I want to do is I want to find the same joy I find in getting fucked up mm. in other places. Yeah. You know? I felt that in the water, bro. What I'm saying is, like. I, I made that decision. I told Bone and Ray, like all our all our point people, I was like, next time I come, I want to do some nutritious shit. I want to go to the Palo. I want to go to the points. I want to go to the hikes. 
you know, even the way I eat. Hawaii can be a beautiful, refreshing state, yeah. or it could be a place where you come back just even more, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even more cloudier. You I know? mean, can we feel the high we get from drugs and yeah. alcohol in different forms of <clears throat> activities? Right, and that's the, what we're trying to get to, 100%. and that takes time. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna go uh, go for a jog right now and get the runner's high. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. You yeah, got to work yeah. up to that and find things that we can, you know, <clears throat> get an exhilarating high. Out you know, of. there is another interesting factor that we need to put into play yeah which is that immediate feeling that you get when you kill a show and you mm. get off the stage yeah that's a high and you're like that is definitely a high. And, i know but that's a high but then after that it's like it's go time you yeah. know what i'm talking about yeah in the green room they got the casamigos already chilled right there yeah you got four or five homies that need what you got the cbs pharmacy what, yeah what do we need right that go time and also, you know, the abbreviation for Hawaii is high, right? <laughs> Everyone has high on their, <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> their shirts. I, I wonder what is the moment in history where, you know, once alcohol got introduced, like, this is the thing we're going to do to celebrate <laughs> every, moment every moment of every life thing. Yeah. You know I what mean, I mean? Like, I'm it's pretty sure fermented berries and, you know, like, it goes way back, bro. You yeah, know? the wine and everything. I'm, I'm definitely sure, yeah. Yeah, it just became, it, I think that's the problem. It got introduced and it became this thing now, like, socially acceptable, everything. And, uh, and you know, technically, that shit is more damaging than any other any drugs drug or anything ever. in this country because, obviously, it's fucking up driving habits For and all sure. that stuff. But it's like damn, I kind of wish that shit wasn't introduced in general. <laughs> like, I blame history. Like, I don't even blame myself. I blame Ancestors. history. Yeah. I blame history. Fuck that. I'm not taking blame for this. I blame yeah, yeah. history for letting this happen. God damn it. Walk a life. Like, fuck, fuck, man. Fuck that, boo. This is some bullshit, bro. Did you drink I, a lot of New York? You were working heavy. Yeah, but, um, you know, the weekends are off from shooting. Mm. And, yeah, I drank a lot. I drank a lot, you know. Have you ever shot something and, like, you know, that's, that took – weeks and then you drank and it got a little swollen and couldn't like the continuity is off <laughs> yeah. nah, nah. Like, why do you have three chins right now my you know I mean? Dude, if you let yourself go and you got a, <laughs> a double chin in a week you took off from your filming you fucking let yourself yeah, yeah. go bro i'm just saying you dude. let yourself fucking go but i have i make sure that i don't go too crazy yeah, yeah. in between filming those like last project we did we spent like three weeks off before we shot the other half of right it. right right and i think three, can you can you look significantly different in three weeks you think bro i am you the number could, one right? fluctuator there's there's some shapeshifters out there bro I'm letting you, you know you right shape shift. there's some shapeshifters out you there shape shift. i get on an elliptical and i just drain you know what it is it's just the water weight just you know just keeps yeah me. but i i'm one of those dudes who don't who, if i don't get a fully rested night mm, you like blow? not even just a fully rested night i need a facial i need a massage <laughs> yeah. i need to put myself in a cryo chamber right, right. to make sure the next morning <laughs> i look refreshed right. you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. I, i'm so jealous of people who get fucked wake up. up and go motherfuckers. yeah the, yeah wake up and go the same night we party together right they wake up and they just look beautiful. Jesus and I'm, some models are like that, you yeah. know? And I'm like, how to, f it's so unfair. Yeah. Like, we have to preserve Jay Park ourselves. is like that, bro. That's true. We party Jay, with we Jay. We party with him till 4 a.m. And I see him in an interview the next day. Like, yeah, I was chilling with the L.A. cats, you know? You know yeah, like Jay wakes up like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what fountain of youth <laughs> did you drink from the night before? Exactly, dude. It's so unfair, man. It's so God. fucking unfair that we have to work twice as hard to keep our faces from not bloating, man. Yeah. Some bullshit. Nah, for it's sure. SK2, somebody said. <laughs> that is the SK2. That's the K-beauty. Um... Alex, how was your uh, how was your weekend, buddy? How was your week? Uh, weekend, week, it's, it's all going. We're just moving forward. <laughs> uh, yeah, works, you know, pretty intense right now. Uh, preparing um, the rows for their uh, album release and tour, and Hell yeah, yeah. We're just counting down the days. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Jesus. All right. Thank you for that update, Alex. You appreciate it. Very um, apocalyptic update right there. Yeah, yeah. No, man, how, how are you doing? That's a that's like a work update. I want to know yeah. how you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for asking that again. Yeah. Uh, I definitely, you know, need to find some ways to, like, deal with stress a little bit better. Um, I feel like I've I've been um, just kind of, like, on edge and, like, jittery. Like, I've, I've, I'm not on I, – I don't drink uh, coffee right now just because, like, it would it would just make – me like even more anxious right you know than i am right now you already have that anxiousness that naturally yeah yeah it's um it's just been um 
I hear you. Yeah, there's you know other things in like my personal life and everything that just it's all I I just I just feel a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. Um, so you know just even taking the time to like you know make sure I'm I'm eating you know and like you know sleeping for sure. Uh, it's just um I I think we're you know the light I'm we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but we just need to lock in a few. What are some of the things that you do to relieve that stress? Because uh you know I feel like the times I've checked in on you, it's it's usually golf. Golf is one of them, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I hit some balls um, on Sunday, and it was pretty good. Um, I also like to like clean my apartment because um, mm. definitely, like when it's all cluttered, like I just feel like um, right. you know, it's just like messy, messy place, messy life. Remember when our mom used to say that? If your room is in this state, think about your mental. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what though? I feel like you know, there's a study that says the messier your place is, the more like genius you are. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's because. If you have the time and the effort to clean and make everything pristine, you're not busy enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying. Like I remember when I was I was uh, at a at a hotel room because we're busy, we're we're doing things. Hotel room's a mess, you know. The room's a mess. But when you have nothing shit to do and you just want to impress the person that's about to come in to show how. It's a different thing. I want a messy mean? mind, motherfucker. I want to yeah. work with the messy minds. <laughs> yeah. I don't want no clear-headed, like, right, right. space cadet motherfuckers. You I know don't mind I mean? clutter. I don't mind books, scripts, shit. But, you know, food, Postmates, remnants, that's that's a different type of mess. I, I know for sure that, you know, hoarding and, you know, to the extreme levels of clutter, like, mm. that is something that people they have issues of their own and traumas to unpack. Like, my mom, I remember wow. back in the day... Um, I never really shared a lot of this, but when me and my sister were living with my mom, this yeah. was right after like my mom and dad split. They had a huge like constant fighting and all that legal issues, all this stuff, right. cops coming. And finally, like me and my sister lived with my mom for a bit and my mom was going through it. Yeah. Our house, you couldn't even see the floor. You told me. Yeah. We had just literally just shit, shit all, like not shit, but yeah. <laughs> just stuff. All right. we couldn't see the carpet. That's Damn. how crazy it was. And if you go to the bathroom, you couldn't see the counter, nothing. Oh, it like, looked like one of those hoarding episodes. It was It was really, but we just lived in it, and right. it was like a regular thing for us. We just walked over things. and I think, if if I may, I think what it was was, because you, your mom just went to that experience, right? Yeah. She's like, I'm not, I, I'm going through this shit myself. Let me fix myself first before you've been getting to this, you know? And yeah. it just kind of just stayed there. Who yeah. made the decision or the initiative? The initiative to be like pick up that one thing and you know what none of us did so we like did we it? just lived in it until mm -hmm. I, I don't remember if something happened and we ended up like cleaning up or we just kind of like all moved out or whatever Some, i just she's a big yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well but you know what actually no you're right what? my dad my dad uh, not my dad um uh, my mom started dating this dude who was like he was kind of like a mentor of mine too right um his name was like moon or something he was like a hippie like kind of a musician type from Korea, but he was really long cool, long haired. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So like, I remember him coming into her life and kind of like fixing stuff mm. and, and cleaning up her life a little bit. And I remember, and but me and my sister didn't lead that because we were a mess. We were teenagers right. that were affected by this kind of like- Abandonment a, Abandoned domestic violence at the house. And so right. we were just really rebellious. Like every day we'd just be out smoking weed. My <laughs> mom would call, like it was just like, it was a mess. Like right. our whole lives were a mess. And I just remember, like, it's so crazy. To, like, this is a crazy thought right now. Like, really thinking about how the house was. Yeah. Literally, you could not see the floor. Jesus. It's just stacks of things everywhere. Right. All, all across, like landmines or something, you know? Yeah. And it was like, I can't believe we lived like that. Um, I really can't believe we lived like that. Your mom's a fucking warrior, dude. She is. Yeah, She's I'm a fucking right? warrior. She's endured a lot of shit. Oh, you know? yeah. Um. So, shout we, out to all those, you know. Uh, my parents had a different hoarding problem, bro. What? We still have food ingredients from 87, B. Like, we, food they don't hoarding. Th they don't throw away shit, man. <laughs> but that's a, food hoarding is more like a straight Korean. Korean yeah, thing. it comes from, I think, like just the poverty, the memory of the poverty. Right. You know what I mean? But they got like kimchi fridge. We got fridges. imitation crab meat from 2002 back in the, like, yeah. Well, my, can you eat it? <laughs> my dad will make it. Uh, yeah, we can eat it. We we would never know. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the only reason I know is because I dug into the uh, the freezer. My dad's one of those type of people that'll put soy sauce in like used Coke bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many times in my life when I went to the pantry, I'm like, oh, Coke, and it was freaking low sodium soy sauce. 
But I feel like, you know, Asian people in that way are just great recyclers. Yeah. Like, people should be reusing those things for that. No, nah, for sure. For you know sure. what I mean? Like, it's all plastic. Yeah, but put a soy sauce in a Sprite bottle, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a little too, it's a little okay. too confusing. That's a good point. That's Come a good on, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a setup. The color of Coke and, <laughs> and soy sauce is a little too close. That's a setup, bro. That's true. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> that is actually a really, really, really good point. Um. Man, I, I think uh, I, when I was in New York, mm. it really made me, and I, I pride Los Angeles so much, Yeah. but New York City, man, it really truly is one of the greatest cities in the world, man. Right. And, and I'm not taking anything from LA. It's just, man, like- There's a pulse. Just walking around Lower East Side, and just every block, just seeing so many people, all walks of life. One guy just making crazy stock <laughs> deals, yelling from top of his lungs, some- Italian dude with like a cigar, just the yeah. fashion kids, you know. It was just like it's inspiring, bro. Like it's like a constant mood board every block for you sure, walk. And I sure. just was like, okay, New York tight. Yeah. It is. You Un know? unapologetic characters. Yeah. Like sometimes walking down a block in New York, it feels like I'm in the back of a theater. Yeah. Which is all these different characters getting ready for the like there's just so <laughs> many different walks of life for sure. Where were you at LES? Uh, by <clears throat> Chinatown. Oh shit! Yeah, and Chinatown, bro. I, I, you know what I loved about that area too, like, because uh, there's like Little Italy and all that, and Chinatown right there. All those places, those small shops, they they only take cash still, mm. but like it's so cheap. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you, you go have, like, uh, when the I don't want to drop the oh, spots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I dropped a couple of spots and, like, Got my homie, yeah, some of my homies in New York were like, that's a spot. Ah, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, don't put, don't geotag it. And I was like, why not? I, th I thought this was, like, the spot people know. It's like, it's no, no, kind no. of the spot, but not everyone knows it. Yeah, yeah. You There's know? a Panda Express on 32nd. <laughs> I, I feel weird about the gatekeeping thing of nah, foods, you know, because sure. it's like at the same time you support. But you don't want to like flood. Like I feel like we should give the upper hand to the actual like the people who live there. Yeah, you know what I mean. You could you could definitely shout out the ones in your area. But if you know the homies from that area is asking us not to do it, yeah, you know we gotta respect that. I, I mean, honestly, man, I, I could eat just Chinese food from Chinatown every day there. Yeah, it's so cheap. It's fire. One I thing I love about New York too, all the little cities, different cultures, they actually look like it. Like Chinatown in New yeah. York looks like Chinatown in New York. You I, know? I, you know, yeah, and, and I realized in LA, I never eat Chinese food That's because true. <clears throat> there just isn't good Chinese food locally for me. Yeah. I know there is SGV and all that. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. also the downtown Chinatown. I know it's not like really the official Chinatown Careful. <laughs> compared <laughs> yeah. to like SGV. Right, yeah. right. But when I'm in New York, like you really get to just eat good takeout or go to the restaurants and stuff so i really indulged in that like i wasn't trying to like get korean food out there you right know? i right. was like i was focused on like chinese italian you know speaking of foods uh i have a little hot take man all right spicy take when we go to hawaii yeah jail and i or all my friends what we tend to say is nah let's let's get official hawaiian food things that we could only get in hawaii okay. Hawaiian food's not that tight, bro. <laughs> Hawaiian food. Hold up. Wow. Hold up. Straight nah, nah. from the island. To all my Usos, to all my Hawaiian okay, natives. Okay, break it down. The break local the local food, like the, the stuff that we haven't even experienced yet, because, you know, there's that whole other side. Someone told me this comparison that Waikiki is kind of like Las Vegas on the Strip. Yeah. Whereas touristy, it's a little more expensive, but it's not the real deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what? So what is authentic Hawaiian food? Uh, authentic Hawaiian food is like pork that's barbecued under the ground with and the just leaf like the and, leaf and yeah, all yeah. this stuff. But the loco mocos and you know like the uh, the Portuguese so like all that. I was asking JL. I was like, honestly, how loco could a moco get? <laughs> <laughs> like, how loco could a moco how, get if a moco how, could get loco? Yo, um, I'm saying it's hamburger meat with some gravy and a, and an egg. Like, I'd rather. Get something that's fire from a different culture in Hawaii. I know this is a very, very hot take, and and I kind of agree with you in a sense that. But let me fight that. It's like I love that. Oh no! I love the egg on the beef. Like I love all those. I love spam and yeah. all that. But I don't feel the like the authenticness of it not, all. Like sure. where is the authenticness? Everything that from? was placed in that plate is like not authentic stuff to us. So I'm it's just like, trying to figure out what is it. So poke. Poke is oh, ho yeah. is that poke, Hawaiian? Poke. Of course, okay, yeah. that's Hawaiian. Poke is good. I, I, I'm saying though, like poke, I want that real deal, man. Poke too with the spicy mayo, and you know, I, I maybe it's because I got it at Waikiki. It just didn't feel like I was eating the 
the culture, bro. It felt like I was eating the sauce, the sriracha. Okay, you know if we got any Hawaiians in the chat or anybody listening right now, yeah. um, call in and we'll talk to you about some real, real Hawaiian food. If you yeah, are knowledgeable know. about this and can put us on, call in and share some of the stuff because I kind of agree, agree with you. Every time yeah. I go there, I, I eat heavy and it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's stuff like, like I would put together like my, myself, <laughs> spam, saying. egg, you know, all this stuff. But yeah. like, I don't know what is the authentic Facts. food and I want to try it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, is, is it the, the roast pig thing the that's roast pig spinning stuff, around? Yeah, yeah. Yo, there's a place called Pino Bistro that we went to though. Uh, shout out to Rad Shad. All the homies out there, Ray. It's What's a, it called? A, a Pana Pina Bistro. It's a spot, it, it's a spot or what? Yeah, it's a spot, and they just have th their menu has like seventy two items on it. And you know, when you go to a restaurant <laughs> yeah. and they're too ambitious with the multicultural thing, you lose faith in the spot. You know, like yeah, pick one, homie. Do you, do you think that yeah, too many choices means it's it's not as good as it should? Hundred percent. Are you? Do I think there's four different chefs back there that has different <laughs> background knowledge, it, okay. or is there one person that knows the fractions for the spices? I've always I, I always make huge mistakes that way. Like when I go to a burger spot, I'll yeah. get a burrito. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know why. I'm just yeah. like I. You, I think I end up th when I end up to these spots, I'm not craving the main thing they have. So I'm right, like, right. fuck it. I'm gonna try this other thing, and it's never good. It's like music taste. It's like, nah, I like the eclectic shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'm different. I'm different. Nah, but this place is fire. That's why I had to shout it out. They had different like Chinese noodles. They had Japanese food. They had Taiwanese food. And then there are bakeries, so they have Japanese cheesecake. Yeah. Shit was incredible, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't want <laughs> to disrespect my island people. The food is incredible over there, but how local Did you say local it to them it? when you were there? Oh, I said it face to face. Okay, okay, of course. Because cool, like, I'm not just going to go yeah, 10,000 yeah, like, miles away. <laughs> you just got back and <laughs> no. the audacity yeah, yeah. of this guy. <laughs> from the safety for the mainland, I can say it from here. No, nah, no, nah, but the love was crazy, bro. Bone passed out, so we had a, uh, another friend drive us to the airport. Yeah. Everyone's just, you know, just each other's crutches out there. It's a beautiful feeling, man. I saw, you know, some of my uh, friends in. Oh, sorry, I got. You good? Flem. I got a bunch of friends in uh, NYC I caught up with. And, um, you know, our friend Danny Chung. Yeah. Shout out Danny Chung. Wait, he's in New York right now? Yeah, he's in New York. Okay. And, Dan yeah. and Danny, uh, for those who may not know, he wrote like four of the songs. He worked on like four of the songs on the Blackpink album. And Black number Pink, one. Blackpink album is number one in the country right now. <laughs> Anyways, he had a bachelor party he was going to attend to mm. this uh, upcoming week. And he was writing his best man speech. Wow. Yeah. Did you, did you give him some pointers or what? Yeah, I did. I gave him, him I gave him, I, I, I ghost wrote a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> or just gave him some ideas nice. that he could. But I was like, as I was giving him ideas, he was like, do you have anything that's just not a roast? <laughs> like just something that I can say endearing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you're right. I just, I was like thinking of it as bits. For sure. You know, but For sure. um, yeah, I, I feel, I just, I just, he reminded me of our best man debacle. I'm just trying to picture Danny it's gonna be a cool ass speech bro i, I was just gonna say super cool right i know man yeah man you know known these two cats for about two and a half years <laughs> word that's kind of how you did it yeah, yeah you know um <clears throat> did you see the you saw all the homies too you did a little roundup with the with the fellas yeah you know like uh, i uh, we played tennis mm. and everyone was really good at tennis. I feel like tennis is becoming a very popular and cool sport. Out on the East Coast too? Yeah, everywhere. Like tennis is becoming a legitly cool, young, hip sport. Would everybody agree? That's right all now? we were watching in Hawaii because jail's all about tennis. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I want to get really good. Yeah. Like I'm trying to get really good because I saw them play. I was like, damn, if you really get a good rally going on, like. That's a thousand calories per hour, JL said. Really? Him, and, him and Zoe, like, yeah, they just play almost every day. I'm going to get on that, man. Maybe today. Maybe we'll hit them up and play today, get a good rally. Have, your mom plays. Remember we went to your uh, her spot? She plays, too. Uh, <clears throat> tennis. We played We played over there. Yeah. No, no. I want to. I, I don't know. Like, I'm not bad. Nah. I I'm mean. Not I'm not good. But I'm saying but, it comes from the same vein of the baseball swing. You know what I mean? So if yeah, you got first that. of all, yeah, I I can I can hit a baseball. Let me just clarify that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a softball thing. It's like I can't hit the softball because it's like coming at a curvature and a speed. But if it comes straight forward, I can definitely hit <laughs> that it. That explanation was so fast I didn't believe it. <laughs> no, I swear. You know I just wanted to get that out the way because people are all confused. It's like, can you hit it? Can you not? Like I can, dude. Trust so me. So you hear live from exclusive a softball is harder to hit than a baseball. For me. Mm. 
the timing of the softball coming into oh because it's an underhand yeah, situation under, uh, so you have to time it right right you know what i mean because my reflexes for something like the baseball i'm more yeah it's prone to it but i don't want to talk about yeah that let's anymore. fuck that whatever let's move on alex <laughs> yes. didn't hit any so um but i did miss eating good korean food so right after this pod i'm so excited to jump into some soup 100 percent. Ooh, 100 percent. hit so a little booty a little I'm booty so excited man i'm so excited um sure. i know exactly what i want i'm gonna go for it you know some fish some, the, the surf and turf the trifecta the that we usually turf get. you of know course. what i'm saying of the course. trifecta of it all um by the way steffi is in korea right now yeah you, you keep that's in why she it? hasn't been in the um she hasn't been on the episode the last two episodes. Um, what time is it right now? Maybe we should try to call her, see what she's doing. Oh, 6 or 4 a.m. Nah. She's not gonna Yeah, she's been having fun. She's with her mom. Oh, nice. Um, and you know, this is like Steffi's first ever like Korea trip. Yeah. Like, like without she, holding the hands. Yeah, trip. like she as a grown adult. Yeah. And she says she's really getting into like, you know, tapping in with her roots. Yeah. She went to a, a film archive because her grandma was an actress oh, in yeah. Korea. So her grandma was an actress in Korea, and her and her mom went to this film archive to find the movie she was in, and apparently she was in, like, four movies. That's crazy. And they put it on and watched her grandma, like, act in the movie, and she was, like, a leading role in it and everything. Imagine what that would be like if I knew that a old, like, imagine our grandchildren. <laughs> like, yeah. Our, our grandfathers used to rap, and then <sighs> they see our old footage. I mean, we're going to be the first generation of our families, I think, that, would have done a non-traditional right. career route right right i mean nah, we've had uncle we've i've had like a couple what, of black uh so my great uh my father's he was a kunabaji it's like a kunabaji so one of my dad's like legitimate brothers you know yeah, like yeah. one of those he used to illustrate for teenage mutant ninja turtles like the really comic. so yeah. like an uncle kind of yeah you, you, you had an uncle that he smoked weed i didn't know any of this back then you know wow. he used to do a little coke you know what i mean yeah he would come over to the house and i didn't know anything but i remember just little glimpses of uh him he you know like the the person that taught you how to draw that teenage mutant ninja turtle the yeah. circle the, yeah i remember that yeah. so i remember him just like smoking weed and doing blow and teaching me how to draw that <laughs> i remember wow. when i was young while he's drinking whiskey so that's where the problem came for, yeah, yeah unfortunately for he passed away he was yeah. beatboxing too that's why it led me to the wrong he beatboxed <laughs> yeah in, wow mm, so he was like mm, a young mm, hip kind of mm, cool uncle yeah he was like 42 he was young didn't really get a shit to, i mean you know he was just an artistic person yeah and what what makes me sad is he never had anyone around him, especially in that age. Mm. Like being artistic was synonymous to being failure, being like the fuck up. Right. You know, so I think men mentally, because he was just surrounded by everyone saying, yeah, you know, that's how true. That uncles stay away from him. He kind of like fell into that. Like that became the reality. But in actuality, like he was the creative motherfucker. Mm. You know, he was the actual like artistic vein in our family. Not many of our family members even listen to music like that. Right. No, I feel like I, I have that uncle too. The, the, it's an uncle I've never met. Yeah. Like I always search for like, where did I get like this, you know, artistic spark from? Yeah. And, and my mom has two brothers. And one brother moved out here, and he does business or whatever. Yeah. But her, the other uncle, Buenos Aires. he's still in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And he, growing up, my mom said like he was always a little bit kind of slow and stuff. Yeah. Like he had some mental issues, um, so they always had to take care of him. But he was always on his guitar. Yeah, and he's still there. And I never met him. That's crazy. Yeah, and I'm like, and then I pull up picture, old picture of my mom and her two uncles. Yeah, that dude with the guitar looks exactly like me. Jesus, you guys should make a documentary. Dumb found him. You know what I mean? Or something like that. Shut that's that's fucking up. nuts. You go to Buenos Shut Aires. The fuck up. Dumbfound him. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Alex, are you you're the black sheep of your family, right? <laughs> no, no, I mean he's mentioned it. Uh yeah. So, you know, both my folks are lawyers. Uh one grandpa was a scientist, one grandpa was a surgeon. Uh yeah, I'm you know, I'm kind of the only person I know that went into like an artistic field. Mm. Um I, I do have also some cool uncles, but uh yeah, I remember. I remember. I was like super little, and like they're all like, uh, you know, like smoking cigarettes in the house, and like I, I was like, a, a, I was like, must have been four or five, and I was like, I remember mm. running up to them, being like, "Now smoking, it's bad for you." And then now I smoke, so there's a table Damn. turned on that one. Wow. I yeah. mean, everybody changes their mind too. My mom and dad used to hate on me smoking, and as soon as they saw it as a lucrative business, they're like, "Maybe we should start a dispensary." <laughs> you know, it's like. 
Uh, oh. They only get on get on you till it's inconvenient for them, <laughs> right. you know. Like, like the expensive bunk store. Yeah, for real. That's all it is. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it is kind of crazy to see a lot of Asian parents change their Hop mentality on. on on weed. For sure. That's that's pretty wild. Like for back sure. then, it was like they were on my case crazy. Like they really tripped on me. Like it was like some serious drug shit. I think a lot of parents, Korean parents, they had like, you know, uh, reefer madness back then. Just kind of like the propaganda, just like super scary. They're waking up from that, you know? Yeah. I think the Korean parents are waking up from that. Uh, the Korean newspapers are now talking about the legality of marijuana and the health benefits. My de my parents definitely have kind of switched sides too a little bit, you know? Right, right, right. So, I mean, they knew I smoked and they, they looked down upon it. They know the, the negative outcome of me being kind of like, you know, lack of motivation or lazy. But they also know that it's not heroin. It's not like class three. Sometimes I test out things that I've done in the past because you know, like we've all done every kind of drug under the oh, fucking, you mean like you slip it? under the sun. You know, <laughs> yeah. snorted pills, coke, all this shit. Right. So I like say it real quick, <laughs> just see where's okay. See how they react. <laughs> right, right. Even though I've done it already, <laughs> I just say like oh, I've snorted this, blah blah. And they're like, don't you? <laughs> You can't be like, I'm like, I'm kidding, mom. I'm kidding. I'm like, okay, then maybe yeah. he's never going to yeah, accept yeah. that one. <laughs> you know, I just kind of test it out. Yeah, I just yeah. I just like test the waters. And nah, they, if if they knew any of that, <laughs> right. they would fucking freak. Yo, and, yeah, throw me in a rehab or something. I did that sometimes too, just to mess with them. I'm like, I don't believe in God anymore. <laughs> my dad, my oh, mom, really? My mom was cooking But you soup. do believe in God. No, no, of course. But, you know, there's times we have doubts. I oh, wanted okay, to okay. test. I wanted to test their acceptance of like the the thought that maybe we have doubts you know what i mean yeah. like i don't want them to feel like that i was being blasphemous but i wanted to, i wanted to see what they felt she was making me a ramen <laughs> with their back turned i was like mom you know i've been going through some stuff these days yeah yeah i don't think i believe in god anymore she turned off the flame to the ramen and walked walked out the kitchen into a room Oh my Stop god! Stop the whole shit. Yeah, I was like, if she didn't talk to me for the rest of the night, I don't. I think about my mom's like, I, you know, I stopped going to church a long time ago. Yeah. When I was a kid, grow, grew up in the church. My mom and dad were all like, go, 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 but they don't go to church, right? So I'm like, why are you in my ear about it, and you don't want to fucking go to church? Because like, you didn't understand the assignment. They wanted to fuck, dude. They the wanted no. I'm, I'm being serious. They wanted you to go to church because think about the one day that they had. You know what I'm saying? Is that a Sunday? You, go, you go to vocational. Do. Trust me, no, bro. No, no, no. Have you ever run into your mom having or your parents having like sex? Like a lot, dude. Really? A lot. My dad. My dad. I never. I only recall one time, growing up, where I woke up, went to my parents' room, and they were they had the blanket over them, but they were completely naked. So yeah. they had, you know, and so I just was like, uh, I yeah. Leave. But it wasn't like the act of them having sex. But oh, you walked man. in on I your parents in. having sex. <laughs> yeah, I walked in, stayed. It was it was bad. Stay. <laughs> Shut the fuck no, up. No, no, no. I'm saying what is wrong with I, you. I know I got paralyzed. What dude. is wrong with I, you? Not, not stayed and enjoyed, but stayed and learned. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're my like, hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like my dad was an animalistic man, dude. Like, remember we go to Costco? My dad would be slick. Like he'd have the seafood, the bread, the wines, and underneath the bread, he'd have the fifty variety pack. Yeah, you know. The Wait, did they? Did they? Did you feel like, oh, like I have a good family? Like I, my parents have a good relationship because you saw that. Did you feel no, good or how did you feel? Disgust. It was disgusting. Of course. Yeah, In yeah. retrospect, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, they're still piping. Yeah. That's fine. But back then, like, just thinking of your parents having sex was crazy. Yeah, you know, my dad was a heavy set dude. So when I'm playing Nintendo 64, and you start hearing, <laughs> it was. Did you ever was, find? Did you ever find porno tapes? Oh yeah, not not like of your parents, but I'm saying. Oh no 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 no. Like porn that your dad had dude, stashed. The reason or mom had why stashed. I am the way I am right now is I found porno very early. I'm yeah. talking eight nine years old. Yeah, I, I me too. I, you know, my dad had tapes. Yeah, I remember like going through his yeah. VHS. And I found a tape. I had Beta 8s, though. Yeah. Before VHS. Oh, really? Smaller joints, bro. Damn. It's called Beta 8s. Yeah. Fuck, you got the vinyl? <laughs> what, the vinyl? Yeah, man. I got no, the... but I, I found a tape. Yeah. And I remember I popped it in because it's it was titled something like, it's like a parody. It was like Cinderella 3 or something <laughs> like S. that. Or Cinderella. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it was, but yeah, that's actually yeah. great. They should have done that. Right. I popped it in. 
And it was, I remember this specifically because it was Ron Jeremy. Oh, shit. It was Ron Jeremy. So this was in the Young. 90s. This yeah, was yeah, in the yeah. 90s. But I remember it was fucking Ron Jeremy because I was like, this guy is gross. <laughs> who the fuck is this guy? Like, this is John fucking, Lovitz looking up. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this? And, and now I know who it is. It, yeah. it was Ron Jeremy. Yeah. And, and it was fucking wild. Like, nah, for sure. And, and you know what? I don't know. I was so wholesome kind of in a way. You turned it off. I wasn't like full in. I wasn't like a horny teenager yet. Right, right. I kind of got freaked out. So I, I remember I turned it off, grabbed the tape, and I ripped out the, you know, the film stuff yeah, inside yeah. the VHS. <laughs> and then I threw it away. And yeah. I remember a few days later, I was in my room. And my, my I heard a conversation of my dad going to my mom's like, did you move the tape? Because it's the thing is, it's missing. Oh shit! And he's like, no, I don't think. And he's like, do you think, right, John or you know my sister Nat? Like, do you think they found it or something? Wow. And I remember hearing that, and I was like, I did find it. Yeah, <laughs> I did. You have find to understand it. that's your dad's I, download folder, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you know I was what like, mean? but he probably was like, someone moved, <laughs> moved it or found spot. it or something, you know? <laughs> that's um, crazy. But I don't know why my reaction was yeah. me destroying it. What age was this? You remember this? This has to have been like preteen for pre sure. So yeah. it was like somewhere nine or ten or something like that but yeah. i just destroyed the tape right. like i pulled out the thing that's and crazy. i threw it in the um the trash uh, uh <laughs> yeah I, I ran to, i ran to the hallway and right. threw it down the because it was an apartment i threw it in the trash yeah. chute and that, I, that was my memory of that Porn tape. police over here dude. i don't know what the fuck that's yeah crazy and then when did you revisit the now, now, I, now i think about that story i'm like you little pussy you square fuck. you little bitch <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. Yeah, you know, I found that uh, box. It, my dad had a, it was not my dad's. Or now that I think about it, he said it was his uncle. Now that I think about it, yeah, he yeah. said it was his uncle. Uh, my brother, uncle, yeah. his brothers. Yeah. But why would it be there at his house, man? Yeah. I just realized the lie. Nah, it was my dad, yo. Oh my god! He had a whole fucking cornucopia. Well, let's take some calls too. Let's do it. Hit let's us up it. on the Discord, y'all. We're gonna put the Discord link in the chat and uh we are gonna start um figuring out a different format right in this we're you know sometimes we're putting the calls sometimes not but we might have a different clip section where it's just the calls on youtube now too yeah um so hit us up if you have any ideas or hit us up in the chat actually if you have any ideas on what we can do we want to do a implement? small we want to do small clips on youtube too that sounds we're fun. gonna have the call section we might even start streaming on a different platform I don't know, but I want to gauge what people think would be the best option on how to do this. Yeah. Also, I want to quickly shout out, um, if you go to dumbfounded.com, you can get the K-Town jerseys. We are down Ooh. to our last supply, get and that. I don't know when I'm going to restock that. So go to dumbfounded.com. You can get the K-Town baseball jerseys. It's a huge hit. It's mm -hmm. been going crazy, but we're down to our last amount. Uh, supply get that man and you can get besides the k-town jerseys the rest of the merch on the site is 80 percent off there's 80 shirts on off. there's shirts on there for like seven dollars eight dollars cop that <laughs> yeah. guys but these are this is like back stock from past tours in the last five years seven years old stuff i just want to clear out the warehouse so go get it 80 percent off all the merch on dumbfound.com yes sir and k-town jerseys available right now yeah let's take the call right now lord ramen what's up what's up ramen that's a good idea. Best of callers clip compilation, maybe yeah. like every month or something. Yeah. Lord Ramen was good. <clears throat> Muted. Couldn't afford ramen. The Lord Ramen. A board ramen. <laughs> Run to the store ramen. Yeah. All right, Mer Boy. Mer Boy. Check, check. What's up, hey, what's man? up? Hey. Coming what's in up? high. What's good? Not much. I was just listening to your stories, and they're they're, they're so wild and they're so funny. <laughs> I mean, God, Rick's lived a wild life. I lived a wild Before life. Get... Rick's a complicated man. <laughs> I'm a comp. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like in Facebook, when you would change the relationship status to "it's complicated," yeah. but you'd be like, "My relationship with God, it's complicated." <laughs> yeah, Murboy, you ever uh, come across a box of pornos in your life, or what, bro? Yeah, uh, Talk I was about it. in the chat, like growing up gay and with a bunch of cousins, I had to pretend I was into like Jenny McCarthy and Playboy oh. under the Christmas tree with the little Dalmatian puppies. Right. right. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Merboy, do me a favor real quick. Before you continue your story, I don't want to interrupt your story, but give me your best impersonation right now. 
we're watching a porno, right? A straight porno with yeah. Jenny McCarthy, Carmen Electra. Like, let's go back to the era. <gasps> damn, God, what, damn, yeah, shit's damn, hot right city. Now. What would you say to pretend yeah. <laughs> that you were straight to, to these to guys fit at the time? What would you say? I'm like, oh wow, like she's so pretty. Or like, <laughs> I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't good at it. Like, no wonder you yeah, didn't yeah. fucking pull that off. Cause yeah, the decor of this <laughs> room is incredible. <laughs> That bed, is, the linen is beautiful right there. I mean, that, that that definitely was must have been like tough, right? Like those Absolutely. those kids were like, oh, look at him fucking fuck the shit out of him, and you're like, <laughs> she's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and I would also wonder like if like because I really didn't know about breast plants, breast implants at that time, and I was like, wow, their boobs were so big and round. Right, 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 right. <laughs> big and round. <laughs> yeah, That's and weird. I remember. I remember like having to pretend like I wanted the porno with, do you remember Ginger Spice? Like her nudes leaked and they were like uh, the Playboy. And I was like, oh mm. yeah, like let's look at that. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so di have you, different experiences. Have you ever watched uh, adult films with friends before? Have you ever? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I no. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> of course you don't do it every day. No, what I mean by that is when I was a teenager, I remember my boy had, um, one of my the friends had Playboy channel. And if you had, like, having Playboy Channel was crazy. At Automatic the time. cool guy. It was, like, 24 hours program. If yep. you guys aren't familiar, they had, like, 24 hours programming of, like, sex. Yeah. It's, it's porno, it's pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And, like, bad girls, too. So oh, yeah. I remember, like, he was the homie, but he wasn't, like, we weren't, like, super close. But he would be like, why does this fool want to come to the crib all the time? <laughs> So I go to his crib, yeah. and I'm like, "Yeah, let's just watch the let's just watch the Playboy channel." Yeah, and I remember just having a pillow over my dick, just being like, "This is tight, right?" I wasn't jerking off, but I just had a huge boner, and I was just like, "This is tight, right?" He's like, "Let's go play basketball." I'm like, "Nah, bro, we're having a good time here. What I'm dribbling right now." <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. So did you at the time? Um, uh, when you were growing up, wait, wait, where, where were you growing up again? Uh, you're in Texas, uh, Houston. Right? Houston. Yeah. And you had mostly straight friends growing up, right? Yeah. Definitely. Damn and straight Texas cousins. too, man. I feel like that is an experience like a lot of gay kids growing up. Uh, you're not going to find an immediate like gay friend. Is that kind of your experience? Uh, definitely. And when you do, you're both not out yet. Exactly. You know, like, so oh. you just have to like, you have to kind of skirt around it and you have to pretend like, oh, we really like wrestling. Not wrestling together, but like, <laughs> WWF and I just imagine like, you and like a gay homie who are both pretending to be straight yes, with each other. You guys are both watching a straight por porno <laughs> and you're like, oh, she's pretty. Her boobs are so <laughs> round. Her boobs are round. I yeah, agree. Shout out, shout out to Kenny because that definitely happened. So that wow. really happened. So you have you have a gay homie that both of you guys would pretend to be straight around each other. <laughs> That's yes, because I mean, like, because you don't want to like come out, and then all of a sudden they tell people, and then all of a sudden you're like right. ostracized. So it's like it's a it's a very like scary, anxiety ridden time. Who yeah. who admitted? Uh, not admit, but like who came out to yeah. each other first? Like you and your friend. Uh, I did. I I was just like, oh man, I have a crush on this soccer player, and then it was like, oh wow, like, and then it like slowly be but surely like came out to each other. <laughs> Damn, um, that's kind of beautiful though. But that that moment of relief. Yeah, I thought it'd be oh, like both definitely. of you guys being like, "Oh, I have something to tell you." And other was like, "I have something to tell you." Okay, I count three. One, two, three. I'm, I'm gay. gay. <laughs> <laughs> Do we just no, become I'm best friends? <laughs> <laughs> Do we just become best? Yeah. No, I mean that's that, awesome. Man. That's pretty tight though that Hell you had yeah. a of someone all along that was just like you. You know, like right under your nose. You ever watch a uh, Departed? With uh, Leo and Matt Damon. Remember that one scene where that guy finds out he's like an undercover cop too? He's like, I gave the wrong address, but you came to the right address. <laughs> How did you know? How did you know? That's just beautiful, man. Uh, wow. So how did your other friends react, your straight friends react when you were gay? Because, you know, I have actually, have, I have a childhood um, friend yeah. that came out. And to be honest, I didn't know too because... He, you know, and he, the, ironically, he was the one that all the girls liked. <laughs> when we were growing up, like, we would go to parties and stuff. Yeah. Like, all the girls were on him. And he was just like, we were like, I, we thought he was so fucking cool. Because yeah. he was just kind of like, nah, I'm not feeling it. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> she wants to smash right now. <laughs> you idiot. You fucking idiot. And he's like, well, she's and pretty. And he's like, nah, <laughs> yeah. She's all right. I yeah. mean, she's all right. And like. We'd be like, what the fuck? Right. Like, he'd get all the girls, and we'd try, and we would get no girls. Right. You know? And then, um, eventually, 
he came out to us uh. and we're like oh my bad <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh shit i think when you have a friend that you know that comes out that's gay i think the ones that you know are friends with that person they're more understanding i think the ones that are kind of like iffy about you know just people with different sexual orientation are the ones that didn't have any relationship with anyone that's like that you know so mm. it's like so like it's like so out there for them but i've had a few friends too that you know i thought he was straight the whole time and then in college he told me he was gay i was like oh that's cool and i had more love for him bro because I, I start thinking about all the times we were together and how yeah. how much he had to fake it right right and right. i felt I, like even when we're smoking on freestyle we're, we're talking about shit. he's freestyle he doesn't really freestyle you know but he's just trying to be in the spot like yeah man he went through a you lot you think he was t he was forcing himself to freestyle 100%. just to fit in or he's what? like bars <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, for sure dude but yeah. yeah, that's 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 much respect for you, my boy. Um, yeah, well, we'll continue with your story. What was your story? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, um, I came out actually to my best friend, who she's still my best friend. We've been best friends for like twenty seven years. Uh, wow. I remember I, I was like so scared. I like, I remember like having like butterflies on my stomach. I was like, oh my god, and I just told her, and I'll never forget. She told me she was on a Darth Vader phone, and mm. uh, I was like, I told her I was like, I'm gay, and she's like, oh, she's like, and she's like, that's cool. Now we can talk about. How hot guys are and i was like oh my god i remember like i wanted to cry because i had like this pit in my stomach like you know and i have had friends i did have a friend who i told came out to and she's like well that's cool just don't hit on guys around me and so right. needless to say i quit being friends with her but right. everyone was super cool and if they weren't you know fuck them right wait, wait she said don't hit on guys around <laughs> her and what, yes. what, what, and yes. what, what does she mean by that she was threatened <laughs> by his sexiness i mean was she, is she I, did she mean like like don't hit on like the dudes that i'm interested in or she just didn't want to see that like you know what i, I mean i'm curious to me it came off like like i'm so like kind of disgusted by that like i don't want to see it i don't want you to so and what's sad is we were really super cool and after that like just something in there died i was like okay like she doesn't love you she's not a friend that's, yeah that's maybe, weird it's maybe like, the worst uh, response ever yeah it's like oh yeah. i'm cool with you being gay but tone it down <laughs> Is that what she no. kind of pretty much she was saying? Yeah, I don't Basically. mind you. Ugh. I don't. I don't mind you being Korean, but not in. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Just don't bring kimchi around me, fam. Ex exactly. Yeah. Like, right. Oh, I hear you. What yeah, a no, loser. No, no. Well, yeah. Murder boy. Thanks for calling in, man. It's always yeah, nice hearing your voice. Good catching up, bro. Yes, sir. Uh, Take care, guys. Yep. Peace, peace. Talk soon. Uh, let's talk to Mexican Hanu. Hello. Hello. What's up, bro? What's up, brother? Yo, what's going on? How you guys been? I'm good, good chill, bro. Can I ask you something? Did I get tan at all? Uh, <laughs> that's a no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. I mean, to be honest, Dumb looks more tan than you. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I've been really tanned lately. Outdoors, man. Yeah. Big tan guy. Come on, you know. His brother-in-law's Filipino, you know. <laughs> that, doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't make me more tan all of a sudden. What's up, Mexican? I uh, <laughs> just wanted to ask you guys. I, <laughs> Wait, that's I, I might look... <laughs> Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Because uh, I, I wanted to ask you guys, like, do you guys think that, like, all the food culture, because that's what I'm focused on. <laughs> Me too. Do you What's think that? that food culture, like, it, a lot of, like, you know, like, TikTok videos kind of, like, ruined, but also enhanced a lot of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, this is actually a good question. We thought of, we, we were talking about this the other day, because now restaurants are, it all, it all depends on the, the, the virality of TikToks right. that are made around new restaurants. Yeah, it's like such a big thing. There's it's, agencies based around it right. and all that. Right. Um, but does it ruin the food culture? I think that's a good question. That is. It definitely helps businesses. It can, but does <clears throat> it ruin the food culture overall? And what what do you mean by that? Like, what 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 do you see that you feel like it's it's possibly affecting in what way? Right. I think like I mean, same with Yelp. You know, like because Yelp was kind of in the same boat, but like people looking at TikTok and just videos like that and then kind of assuming that's the spot, you know? Mm, yeah, I know what you mean, man. It's kind of like it's at a talent show. Sometimes it's about how, how, like which which performer brought the biggest crowd. It's a popularity contest at the end of the day. And sometimes the skills and like the actual, you know, the important things kind of get looked over, you know? Mm. I see that. But I, <clears throat> you know what's important is is just the visibility of the spot. <laughs> Sometimes people get a bad... Like, when I see a bad score on Yelp, 
I, I don't automatically just count it out. I go to the comments and I see which of the negative comments ruined the score. I don't not go somewhere because someone doesn't like it. You know what I mean? I need to go there myself and experience it. But I do hear you. There is a lot of filtration that happens. You don't you don't go to a lot of spots because there's three other fire ones that are went viral on TikTok. It, it's hard. I mean, you know, there's so many restaurants, and also it does go by trend. You yeah. know, and there are certain foods that are more popular than others. Yeah. You know, like I you know I, I've been trying to eat more vegetarian mm. and vegan and stuff, mm. and it's good. But like overall, it's not a hugely popular thing right. yet. Right. So there's all these places that get overlooked. You know, I have a friend who opened up a vegetarian spot in K Town. Yeah. But people aren't necessarily coming to K Town for vegetarian food. Yeah. So it's like it's it's kind of fucked up in that way. Um, I don't know TikTok. I think all that stuff exposes more restaurants. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. It gives it gives it shines a light on them. And before that, how did we advertise it? Was it just mostly it was word of mouth, right? Yeah, word of mouth, pretty much. Just, like, word, yo, that place is good. Word of mouth. And then, you know, like, we had, like, check-in or squares, you know, like, when uh, before Yelp and all that, where people said, like, we're here, we're there. Right. You know? Oh, and Instagram. Instagram, yeah. the pictures and the tagging and all that. Yeah. You know? Um, nah. I don't know. I don't <clears throat> know. I, I have a hard – I think TikTok helps so much shit but also ruins so many things and not even just food. Yeah. I think it ruins a lot of things, like – Rap, <laughs> rap, dance, like, yeah, pretty uh, girls, like yeah. you know, even just beauty, everything. Like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of shit for sure. You but know? I think the way you said it was perfect. Like I think you answered your own question. Does it help or does it make it better? It's a combination of both, bro. It's a Venn diagram, you know. Yep, yep, definitely. All Thanks right. for calling in, Hanu. Yo, is Hanu He's... is is that is that the jowl? Is that what you're saying? The pork jowl? Uh, okay. No, Hanu like the cow. Gotcha. Korean cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. All right, let's talk to Flash Nitro. I the Flash. My man is a comma in his name. Is that how you feel? Nitro the Flash. What's going on? A little slow. What's up? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing today? Y'all. What's cool? up, buddy? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing all right, man. Just a little down in the dumps. I'm uh, between gigs right now. Mm. You know, I, I spent all my money on on music shit. And right. uh, not promotion, so now I'm waiting to get the promotion stuff moving. Okay, what do you do? Uh, what, what What do you mean you spent it on music shit? What shit? Like plugins. Uh, oh, okay. Plugins, <laughs> plugins, and uh, I got myself like an, I had to get a new laptop. My new laptop crapped out on me. Right. So I had to get a new gaming laptop. It was like two K. Let, let me ask you. A, yeah. yeah. Are you Are you an aspiring musician? I am. I am. Yeah. Let me ask you something because um. And this goes out to everybody out there who's aspiring musician, like, and you know, everyone who's independent trying to get their music off the ground, right? Do right. you, for you personally, do you buy other artists' merch and go to concerts and stuff like that? Absolutely. I've been to your concert, man. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I'm just checking yeah. because I feel like this is a thing for a lot of people. We, we are like, you know, and I blame, I, I'm pointing fingers at myself too. Um, talking about my independent career or whatever like but not everyone's going to each other's shows right. and buying the merch yeah. and all that yeah which is kind of like funny right, right. that we're like right right, right. <laughs> kind of complaining about our yeah. careers and like we don't really support other because no one's buying albums right now right like no one's like you know what i mean like right. no one's out there buying records or shit like that like and they're selling it on itunes and stuff Fuck even buying like how many of the homies actually stream my shit and put the numbers up. You know what I mean? Mm, like it's like it's like even the minuscule amount of even uh, s spreading the name of a show or or you know the the info and stuff like that. It doesn't purchases out the window. I don't even expect a, a album sale like that yeah. or a merch sale. But even just you know and then but we but we're quick to put up that Instagram reel like. When your homie opens a business, you don't ask for a hookup. You know, like, what do you think is yeah. the what do you think is the best way you can support an artist? Like, do you think it's merch? Uh, you know what I think? I actually think it's probably sharing it on their socials. Hundred percent. I think that is the best way. Hundred percent. Support your homie. What you do know, you think? If we got a following, we're we're billboards. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And also, I think we've reached a point in our life where in our music taste like people respect what we like you know and they'll check it out because we say we like it you right. know so definitely right. i think our sphere of influence is the best way to help other people okay so well, like, let, let uh like what were you saying flash yeah uh i was just i was just saying i agree you know like i support my friend shows but when it comes to the kickback mm. it ain't it ain't really happening you know uh even though 
I feel I'm one of the better artists slash producers in the city. Right. You know, it doesn't really matter if I don't have like clout. And that's a weird thing because I don't want to have to chase that, you know? No, 100%, bro. I mean, but the thing about it is, you know, that's the thing. You can't expect favors back just because you do that for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I've Absolutely. learned that too. As soon I've as he said too. kickback, I was like, come on. No, nah, because you can start getting a lot of like pent up, you know, of course. pettiness of built course. up. You, you don't know? want to add up the thing. You don't want to add up the receipts. But after a while, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, at that point, you, then that'll make you just stop rocking with their shit. I mean, yeah. but you should rock with it if you fuck with it, like legitimately. You For sure. It, you know, but yeah, you shouldn't expect anything back. But Flash, quickly, my two cents, Nitro, is like, I hear you, man. Sometimes when I was in Virginia and I was watching Dumb from afar and I was just watching, you know, my peoples in New York and Cali just kind of like soaring, you know, and I, I felt like, damn, is it because I'm not hitting the stream? Is it because I'm not good enough? Like, what am I not reaching? During that time, that period of just like, man, like people are not support, like, I'm not getting that push that I should have. I just zoned in, used that energy and just fucking stored up. You know what I mean? Just had ammunition crates of just stuff, just ready to go. And then all of a sudden you're so focused on just like stacking up. You stop caring about what people are thinking. And when you drop it, that's when you reap what you sow, bro. I'm telling you. So keep it up, bro. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you sound like you're in an empty room right now. <laughs> I am, I am. I'm pretty much, I'm just in my my little studio. I only got little panels on the wall. I right, got you. Up. Well, Hell yeah. Keep doing your thing, bro. Talk no doubt. Well, do. Let's talk Peace to Mac up. Easy, bro. Mac Easy, what's good? It's good. What up, Mac? Hey, what's going on, guys? How's it going? What's up, baby? Good. Coming in kind of hot. <laughs> Back away from the mic a little bit. Yeah. All right. We're it's good. a little loud, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh no, I'm just uh, talking a bit close to my laptop. Okay, now. we're good. This is good. Yeah, talk to me. Nice, nice. Um, no, I was just um, hearing uh, what Nitro was saying about um, you know, the support for like the local things and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, because uh, I'm I'm holding a concert uh, in like two days, and then it's yeah, kind of the same thing of like um, you know, not seeing that community support and that kind of thing. It's like okay, like where are we going wrong here? It's like is there a point where you need to stop doing this because you're not seeing um. The support which I, you know everyone's saying that they'll come but then it's like they're not actually like buying a ticket that kind of thing right right it's it's so tricky because you know when i was coming up that local scene was a real thing and i don't know if it much of it is a real thing anymore everything's so internet now right. you know what i mean right. and i'm like how do you gauge that and the, the the fan support but i know it's important like people to come up to the shows locally too but there just isn't a scene scene mm. you know what i mean mm. like I, I just don't everybody has their own thing going on for separately sure, like sure. but i don't know it's tricky and it is know, tricky but you know what i think what you got to do mac you got to make more friends bro mm. <laughs> you got to just go make more personal friends yeah and make mm. that the scene for you yeah yeah good, good you know yeah, you know I mean, yeah. yeah go ahead go ahead Oh, no, no, I mean, yeah, no, uh, I mean, like, that's, uh, I guess that's kind of what I've been trying to do this because um, it's like right now it's um, uh, East and Southeast Asian Heritage Month in the UK. So it's like the second year it's, um, it's been doing it. So, oh, wow. You know, I can, yeah, so I'm, I'm throwing a concert where it's like, okay, all the artists, they're all up and coming, um, like Asian artists in the UK. So it's like, okay, like trying to give them a platform because, you know, the big the record labels, they don't really do it and whatever. And it's like, oh, hey, you know, this is a big thing. All these community groups, they're supporting it. But it's like, okay come to the concert then uh or, and then even the ones even the groups where it's like oh yeah you know we're all about this music thing for asians it's like promote the concert then it's like hey this is your mo like why are you not doing this so th that's the kind of thing which i'm seeing mm, right yeah so it's like you know you you um you reach out to the people you think like you're ticking the boxes creating that um the advocacy and whatever and support but then it's like okay at the end of the day it's like are they going to come through for it I hear you, bro. But you know, the, the hardest thing about creating events like that, back in the day, there was things called street teams. You know what I mean? There were things like you have to be on the ground. One thing in Vegas, if you go around in Vegas, there's all these people passing out little like little little cards with women in them. You know, I don't know if you ever seen that. They just they have these, these little pamphlets with naked girls on it, and they pass it out to everybody on the street that's walking out. Mathematically, ninety percent of the people are gonna look at that, throw it on the ground, but they keep doing it. Because there's it's, it's a big world out there, and there's gonna be people that's interested in that show. Mm -hmm. So kind of like what Dumb said when he said make friends is we have to broaden, we have to broaden out that that the pamphlet passing out situation, and just mathematically it'll make sense. You just have to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 
It's, I mean, sure. overall, though, the, the shit is just hard. It's hard, bro. Like, that's the mm. thing. There's no method, really, to this madness. Yeah. It is just a hard thing. Yeah. Like, if you manage to get a fan base of 100 people, you are fucking lucky. You're lucky. This is a hard-ass mm. thing to do. We are blessed, for sure. Blessed, and also, like, it's tough to upkeep, too. That's why I don't, you know, like... People don't follow me as much as they did five years, but that's mm. my fault. I, I'm not necessarily like trying that. Like I'm right. not out on the street, like street yeah, yeah. teaming in and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I don't care, you know. But it's just, it's a very, very hard thing to yeah. upkeep and keep going and and all that. But you got to do it. I mean, yeah. what can you? Well, if you want to do it, you got to do it. You got to fucking what, rough it out. Yeah, and, and exactly. It's not easy, and it upsets me. Knowing that some people expect it to be easy, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, they think it's just like an automatic thing, like feel the dreams. Nah, baby, it's a lot harder than that. Well, Mac, yo, keep it up, though, brother. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, well, after I do that, I'm flying out to uh, LA. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll be around now. So uh, you are. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, maybe we'll grab some uh, grab some lunch and shit. Um, sure, uh, for sure. We don't awesome. do that with everybody, yeah. but you, 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 seem, <laughs> you seem safe. All right, brother. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, bro. All right, cool. Message uh, you. All right, cool. All right. Let's talk to uh, Ableist Rat and then uh, wrap it up. Yep. Hello. Hello. What's hey, up? Hey, what's up, brother? Oh, hey. Hi. Yeah. Uh, hello? Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, we're here. I hear you guys. Oh, you um, can't hear us? I was just... Oh, no, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I ask, like, how do you guys get through those kind of, like, networking event stuff? Because <laughs> I think he said he's, like, usually pretty, like, fluent in those kind of situations. And I'm, I'm I don't know, I'm not much of a, like... I'm not that great at socializing at those kind of things. So oh no, I, I don't. Curious. I hate them. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I if someone asks me to go to a network event mixer, I avoid it completely. Oh man, because my manager asks me to go all the time. Yeah, and I'm like, nah, bro. I think you got this. Yeah, and like and that's why I necessary? have people to represent right. me to do that. I don't want to do that. I hate that shit. Yeah, I am so bad at. I don't want to like meet people that i'm gonna forget and like you know as soon as i peace out right. after that drink like i just i don't care like there's no retention for me after those parties man i don't know like i i i feel like i get liked less after i go to those network parties like it doesn't work good for me you know yeah i mean it's like i rarely get somebody who s presents something an idea that i'm like oh yeah let's talk and let's work it out let's make it happen right it, you know, 90% of the time, I don't hear anything that I'm interested in. Right, right. You know? Right. But just, you know, I don't like, know the answer you're looking for, but you, you just go to the spots that you're comfortable Well, what I kind mean. of stuff are you networking, though? What, what industry is this? Oh, it's like a, it's like related for school. Oh. Oh, oh kind of like you're, like, you're talking about like mixes and stuff like that? Just to make friends and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, in that situation, bro, you know what you do? You always, when you, whenever you get a drink, just always have a second drink ready, you know, the pass off drink and just offer people drinks and just talk, just talk. You just got to spark the conversation. I, I was very bad at doing that too. I realized during the pandemic how introverted I actually am. I always, I always assume that I'm an extroverted guy that it made it, that found it very easy to just kind of break ice and stuff like that. But I realized that that's not really... You know, you know what I realized? I totally forgot how to make friends because <laughs> yeah. it's been so long. Like I don't remember the last time I was like, "Let's be friends." Yeah, <laughs> I totally forgot. Like I just, I just, as you were talking about, like going meeting people at networking events and yeah. it, it, you know keeping up with each other. Like I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> when's the last time I did that?" Like I don't have a single new person that I was like. Yeah. All right, you're part of the crew now. Ever like, since no new friends, I didn't. I never had any uh, new friends. Just, I'm just trying to think right now. Like, there's no new person that I call kind of yeah regularly. Yeah, uh, actually, I got I got I got a few right few um, people that I'm like I can grab lunch with, you know. But we're not together all the time, right? You know, uh, everybody that I'm with like pretty regularly. I, we've known each other for quite a while now, but. I, I, I don't know. I'm definitely, I, I will say 100% I'm not out here looking for any new friends. I'm not looking. If it happens, then <laughs> right, it's cool. But it has right, to be right. completely naturally Natural. like, this motherfucker is dope. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you met a new dude and was like, you're dope? Yeah. Not even with their skill and their music skills, just like as a person. Yeah, yeah. You're a dope person. <laughs> Can I, I don't remember the last time I said some shit like that. 
<laughs> Can I be your friend? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> have you, I, 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 there just isn't, t- like, you have to be an incredible person yeah. for someone to have an impact like that. Yeah. On Jesus you. could come down. I was still questioning yeah. right now. <laughs> Every time someone meets me that knows of me but yeah. doesn't know me personally, they're usually like, you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> Damn, that laugh was a little loud. Alex. <laughs> yeah, Alex, Alex hasn't laughed once until right now, which is crazy. Yeah, man. Aimless, man. Just, you know, be comfortable in your own skin. And I know there's not, there's not any field tips like that. That That is the one thing I will say, you know, that I wish I did a lot sooner. Mm. Um, now I'm so comfortable in my skin. Right. I know exactly who I am, what yeah. I want. I don't like wasting time. That's a big reason, too. That's why sometimes I'm not nice. I just don't care to you know entertain that relationship 100%. or that conversation what am i wasting time with you're yeah. actually distracting me from yeah me d- really on my path already exactly. you know so exactly. to me is like really feel com- like don't get pushed into situations you don't want to be in yeah don't that's honestly something i yeah, struggled with don't text back and forth with somebody you don't really want to yeah. those things are just a waste of fucking time yo because you know the truth is like because i was such a people pleaser like i would go out of my way to do something for this random person and it ended up biting me in the ass when in actuality if i said no from the beginning he would have respected me more later down the line because he was like oh okay well this wasn't meant to be you know what i mean i've, I've had so many reoccurrences in my life like that, where I put it upon myself when I should have just said no in the beginning or just not reached out. So just knowing to discern and figuring out which situation is worth it, what's not, like that'll come to you, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he was just asking a simple networking <laughs> question that <laughs> we took too far. Jesus. <laughs> um, thank you, bro. Appreciate it, thank man. Thank you, bro. All right, let's take one more. Let's one do more. Uh, Lord Ramen or Fuya, whichever one answers first. So. All right. Hey, hello. This is Ramen. What's up? Hey, Ramen. What's good, baby? Hey, what's good, man? What makes you the Lord of Ramen? Uh, do you want the whole lore of my name, or do you, or like what? Uh, let like me get the food? abridged version because we need to get some Korean food in our stomachs. But what makes you the Lord of Ramen, bro? Because that's a heavy statement. Oh, I'm the yeah, guy. I got you. I got you. Right. Yeah. So basically, like my when I was like little, when I was a baby and shit, mm-hmm. I was hella picky. Like you know, like my my grandma back in the Philippines, like she tried to feed me like fried chicken and stuff. I refused. So like you she were a speedy, picky like, baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, all, all I eat is like ramen, and so that's why I'm Lord Ramen. So wow. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind, yeah, bro? Yeah. Uh yeah. Um, this is kind of related with food too and stuff. But I like, like I, I want to learn how to make kimchi. So this is kind of like related to that. So how yeah. do I make kimchi? Well, yeah. you go on YouTube first of all. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the first step. <laughs> yeah, um, I. Uh, it tasted off so like i'm just looking for like advice on like maybe like what i did wrong could i be honest know? about kimchi mm. just go buy that shit yeah, yeah. No, i was just like, about to say that i ever no, I'm, I'm being real yeah. i see these okay. these videos of people I, and you know honestly I, that shit surprised me i didn't know how kimchi was made until like five years ago it's pretty complex oh, like yeah. i grew up under my whole life and yeah. i was like oh it just comes in a jar <laughs> I Bro, just I really thought... like I didn't know people lather up each leaf. <laughs> each leaf. Like Bro. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. This is how kimchi is made. <laughs> mm-hmm. I literally thought it magically appears in a Korean <laughs> uh, fucking market. Yeah. Like in a jar. And I was like, and when I saw that you put all the things on each leaf and then you fold it and you rubber band it and mm-hmm. throw it in. I was like, just go buy that go shit. Buy it. Just go buy it. There's no reason to make kimchi. There's no reason at all. Lord Ramen, do you have access to a Korean market? Uh, yeah, I do. I just thought it would save me more money in the long run. That's why I was like thinking about making it. But now that you guys say it, you guys are Well, right. I mean, Fuck you have it, to understand there's, there's, a, there's a time and money situation too. You do save some money mm-hmm. with ingredients, barely. Like the, the difference is not mm-hmm. that much. And also, if you trash that batch, then you have to do it all over again. So you wasted not only weeks, but you wasted the money as well. Literally, to make kimchi, you have to ruin your knees because you're squatting <laughs> down. You got to stain your kitchen floors. You got to have like 16 ingredients, yeah. lather up each leaf, put it underground, and let it age until like like a daughter or a son. Sing. And then you get it out, and then you chop it into little pieces. <laughs> And then jar it. And then jar it. And and that's good for seven days. (laughs) What the fuck? Go and buy that shit. Yeah. But if you... 
Oh, go ahead. Lord Ramen, if you really do want to venture into cooking that tastes good, I'm just going to give you an easy access. Mangchi, M A N G C H I. She's a Korean lady who's on YouTube. All of her food profiles I match perfectly. She's very, she has a YouTube video and like a recipe step by step. If you go to mangchi.com, she'll take care mm -hmm. of you, bro. If you want I to, did. but I definitely agree with Dumbfounded Man in this situation. Just nine ninety nine for a medium jar, fourteen ninety nine yeah. for a large one, baby. It takes a long time. You got to age it. You got to get arthritis. <laughs> you got to get all types of shit. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> thanks for calling, bro. Appreciate Yo, it. Thank you. Enjoy Robert. the kimchi. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Uh, thank you to everybody who tuned in. Came mm -hmm. in straight from New York. Rick came from Hawaii, but we have to get this in for the people, man. Yes, we appreciate everybody always tuning in. If you want to support, go to dumbfounded.com, buy some merch. We also gonna set up a Patreon because we're not getting no fucking sponsors, so we're not making no money. Yeah, we need some. Um, we're gonna throw a Patreon. We would love for you guys to donate anything to keep us going. Mm. Um, you know, all this editing, all this stuff, everything takes time, time and money. If you've noticed, um, our episodes haven't had any kind of, um, ad or any companies reaching out. So, right. um, we're not making money right now, but we, I'd like to, and I'd like to pay out the staff and Please all that stuff. Out, so man. hit us up. We're going to set up the, like Alex, can we set up the Patreon? Like literally. Yeah. Like today. We'll do it today. I'll do it. We're going to do it today. today and yeah. can we set that up? Cause yep. I know we have support people who love the pod. But we are having some, you know. I'm dedicating this day today just to work on the pod. Let's yeah. do it. Hit us up, brands. Hit us up, man. You yeah. know, or or if you guys just want to don donate, please. I like just and to be honest, I love doing this shit monthly. I'm not even trying to make like huge money, but I would like to pay out and do more shit. Like right. I want to like put clips out on the channel, do the calls separately, all that stuff. But let's level up. All right, guys. Uh, tune in next week for another episode of Fun with Dumb. Peace. Peace.